Good morning to you, WCC, and anyone else that is watching. To everybody that's out there in the crowd, hey, y'all. How y'all doing? Uh, this morning, uh, we have another series, another part of the series of My Black Experience, and we have none other than Pastor Roy Patterson. How you Man, doing, I'm good. I'm good. So good to be here with you, Shelby. I'm glad you could be here. Thank you. Uh, we're, we've been asking people a lot about... Uh, uh, Black History Month this month. Uh, uh, how many uh, people enjoy it? Uh, why they enjoy it? I would love first, though, to tell us about a little bit about your job and where you work at. Sure, I work at Moody Bible Institute, um, downtown Chicago. Been there since 2001. Actually, my first day was when the planes hit in New York, September the 11th. And so uh, the job has been community relations, reaching out to pastors. Um, just enjoying the opportunity to encourage men and women of God in, in what they're doing and connecting them to the school and learning from each other, having a reciprocal relationship. Okay, okay, so you've been there 20 years. Yes, sir. Ooh, that's a long, in the same place? Yes, sir. That's, that's a long time. Really? Okay. That's a long time? Okay. I'm, I'm 30, Okay, too. let's keep moving. Yeah, yeah, yeah okay. <laughs> so I would love to know, in those 20 years, uh, what your experience as an African-American uh, in that role sure. has been, and what changes you may have seen. Um, it, you know, it has been interesting. When I first took the job, um, the guy who hired me, his name was Bruce Everhart, he was a station manager at the time, he said, we're not having a lot of inroads in the black community, I want you to come and help us. We need to learn. And so if you could, you know, connect. I said, okay, I'll do that as long as I can tell the truth. Mm. Y'all want me to come, I gotta bring me. And uh, they said, okay, that's fine. And so uh, when I started to listen to the radio station a little bit more, I noticed that we were not present. Uh, Fred wasn't on there. Yolanda wasn't on there. Kirk wasn't on there. Richard Smallwood was not on there. We had Twyla Paris, uh, but Twyla is not Yolanda. Come on, somebody. And so I said, hey, we should play more, you know, gospel music. It could be middle of the road, you know. We'd have to be hand clapping, foot stomping. It, it, you know, I get it. You know, you're trying to go after a certain market and uh, have a certain genre in place. And so uh, first the lady who was over the music said, well, you know, let me think about it. I'll get back. I said, okay. A few months later, I went and said, hey, what do you think? Uh, let me get back. I'll think, okay. I said, and the next time I went, she said, listen, we're not going to do that. We're just not going to do it, Okay. I said, okay, then. About a year later, maybe eight months later, she was gone. Fast forward about a year, uh, a guy approached me and said, how would you like to do this program called Celebration of Praise? And what we're going to do, we're going to mix the music. We'll, we'll have Fred Hammond on there, and we'll have Cast and Crowns. At first, I thought he was lying. <laughs> okay. I never will forget this. Um, I, I, I hesitated because I really I thought he was playing. And uh, I, I was like, y'all not ready. Y'all not ready. And so um, I was doing something at the church I was pastoring at the time. Phil Tarver was there. And uh, he just spoke a word to me and said, hey, God's going to open a door for you, and you need to walk through it. Hmm. And so that Monday, immediately, I told a guy's name was Denny Nugent, I'll do it. And I did it probably for about 12, 13 years. Wow. 12, 13 years. And so uh, see, seeing that, I became station manager and um, enjoyed that, you know, for the most part. Um, eventually, you know, I wanted to, to do more in that role. And so they, they were really, really tight when it came to uh, having freedom and, and power. I think that's one of the, the biggest things that I, I've noticed when it comes to our brothers and sisters um, who are majority culture. Uh, sure, let's have a program, let's have the music, let's have a certain preacher, let's have a certain day. But at the end of the, the day, one of the things they struggle with is letting go of power sharing power. And so, um, so yeah, I've, I've seen much, I've experienced much. Currently, I'm serving as the interim vice president and dean of students. And so, I've been doing that the last few months. And, um, and so, what that entails is really just student care, uh, whether young people are struggling with a variety of issues, whatever it might be, um, I need to step in in that role and setting up chapels, et cetera. And so, enjoying it, and, um, but looking forward to getting back to my community relations job. Okay. Yes, sir. So, next question is, as, um, as we are in February, yep. what do you feel the importance of Black History Month is to our people? Well, to our people, it, it says that we 
um, have been led, we've been guided. Um, remember the old song, Lift Every Voice and Sing, Till Earth and Heaven Ring? Uh, rings with the harmony of, of liberty. Um, I, I love that song because it, it talks about the, the stony road that we've tried and a bitter the chastening ride, et cetera. Our, our history helps us to have hope for the future. And I remember as a child um, seeing Ebony Magazine. Of course, I want to see what was happening with the Jackson 5 and, and the Four Tops and the Spinners and all of that there. But in the front of the magazine, they, they said, hey, so-and-so was promoter to vice president. Such and such owns a business. And, and, and this happened in history. And I said, to me, to my people, I had no idea. I thought all we was doing was thugging and drugging and could sing and dance. I had no idea. We, we was in IBM. We were, we, were, we were in Quaker Oats. Come on, somebody. And so the more I saw history, uh, the more I realized that I could be more than whatever TV at that time said that I could be. I, I could be more than JJ. No offense, Jimmy Walker. I'm, I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean no harm. Uh, I, I, could, <laughs> I could do more than what's happening. Uh, uh, you know, I, I, could, I could be more than just an athlete or a singer. I, I could do whatever I wanted to do. I, and so I think history helps, helps us in, in that way. I mean, come on. Harriet Tubman, amazing. Uh, Medgar Edwards, list goes on and on. And I only think it, it helps our people, but I think it helps majority culture as well. When you see the hand of God on, on, on black people and all the oppression that we've gone through, it ought to inspire white people, Latino people, Asian people to say, hold it. If God can bless them like that, this God must be real, and I want some of what they got. And so that's, that's why I think it's important. That is very huge to have people that we can look up to uh, and see oh uh, publicly. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, so, that being said, what is the one moment or multiple moments that you felt most proud to be an African American? Um, Harold, when Harold Washington was elected as mayor of the city of Chicago, my mind was blown. Blown. I just, I couldn't believe it. I just couldn't believe it, and so grateful for that. When uh, Barack Obama walked out on the stage with his family, and um, again, my mind was was just like, "Is this happening in my lifetime?" Uh, certainly, when when I, I I saw Martin Luther King give the speech on um, on that plaza, uh, the March on Washington, and oh my goodness, it just was mind boggling for me, and so. I've had many moments, many, many moments, um, but those, those, those are, those are. If you, I, I got one more. I remember when Evie Hill preached at Moody Bible Institute, and uh, <laughs> and so this, this is the goofy part of it. You know, uh, we rarely had any black people speak. I think he was probably the first one I saw in the three years I was there, maybe the second. And uh, so you're sitting in your seat and you're saying, "Don't mess up! Don't mess up! Don't mess up! Please don't mess up!" <laughs> Don't, 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 don't mess up. Man, Evie, Edward, Edward Victor, Evie Hill not only hit a home run, it was a grand slam. It, it was an amazing message called What You Have When You Have Jesus. I was blown away. Just the, the power, the exposition in the word. And so, um, yeah, I've got, I've got many, many moments. And... Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm proud to be who God has made me. I am. Okay. So, this is Spare the Moment. My last question. Let's do it. Okay. What is your favorite Negro spiritual? And can you give, a, give us a little taste go, before we go? I think this is a Negro spiritual. I don't know. Because <laughs> I, I got a couple of them. Uh, but uh, I think it's, uh, I know I've been changed. I know I've been changed. I know I've been changed. The angels in Heaven done sign my name. Say I know I've been changed. 
Everybody, that's our time. Uh, Pastor Roy, I thank you so much for joining thank us you. today. Thank you. Thanks for having um, me. In the comments, if you're here with us, in the comments, I want you to talk about your black experience so that next week we can post those possibly uh, across our uh, website, on Facebook. But we really want to hear from you. Uh, we want you to tell us about your black experience, what it means to you about being black, uh, what your favorite experience was being black, uh, what you think as a church we can do to assist uh, African Americans in our community as well across the globe. Uh, so if you could put those in uh, the comments. If you love this, heart it, like it, whatever you want to do. But we can't wait to hear from you. Uh, Pastor Roy, once again, thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, and everyone... Have a good day. We're going to continue with service, all right? WCC family. We hope you're having a great morning, and we just hope that you enjoyed the My Black Experience this morning. Um, and we just want to open up in prayer. We want to welcome you all to worship with us today because God is awesome. He never fails. He never makes a mistake. He always uplifts us in our time of trouble. So we just want to honor him this morning. Father God, we thank you for this wonderful day. We thank you for the breath of life you've given us to be here another day. We don't take it for granted, Father God, because you have anointed us all, Lord God, to be here once again. And we thank you, Father God. We thank you for um, the activity of our limbs, oh God. We thank you for being able to be here once more, Lord God, to give you the honor, to give you the praise, to worship you, Father, because you are worthy. And there is no one beside you, Father. There's no one who's greater than you. And we recognize that today, Lord God. So we just want you to come and be with us, oh God. Be with those who are at home watching the service, oh God. And we just pray that you are blessed, that you are ministered to, Father, as we give you all the glory and all the honor. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Good morning, WCC. How many of you know we serve a victorious God? Anybody know that we serve a victorious God? If you could, in the comments, put victorious. It's good to know that he has won the victory, but he also did it all for us. Let's give God the highest praise for all that he has done for us.
Amen. Amen. And our desire is that he would arise in your life, give you life, and give you victory as well. We're so glad to, to be celebrating Black History Month and 
uh, the black experiences, and we thank God for uh, the many uh, experiences that we have had. And our God is a great God, is a mighty God, and he's worked even in spite of what's going on or what has gone on in the world. We have a great speaker today. Uh, many of us know him. Uh, some of us call him Roy Patterson, Pastor Patterson, Minister Patterson. Uh, but just a good friend of Waukegan Community Church, and he really doesn't need an introduction, but I just wanted to give him an introduction. I said, send me over your bio, okay? Um, and he wrote he, he, uh, several things. He said, a follower of Christ Jesus, very important, active VP and dean of student at Moody. Amen. Praise the Lord. He's been there for 20 years. God has opened the door at Moody. A lot has happened in 20 years. Amen. Oh, a lot has happened. You can't tell it all. <laughs> uh, and his wife been married for 38 years to uh, Lynette. Talked with her yesterday. And good friend of uh, mine's and first lady. They have three adult children. Amen. Uh, and, and one of the, the three has pursued singing a little bit. Okay, just a little bit. I was thinking that the whole family would be a singing family. It'd be like that commercial, you know, that commercial where they'd be dancing around in the, in the, in the upstairs, they'd be doing that dancing. I would think that's how the Pattersons would be. They'd be dancing. All. <laughs> but only one pursued uh, singing. Uh, got three uh, grandchildren. And uh, he also said, I'm a fan of Waukegan Community Church. So uh, we praise you and we pray what God is doing in and through your life. And that God will speak today. I made up mine. We need a made-up mind today like never before. So after our worship team, bless us with one more song. The next voice you will hear is the voice of Minister Roy Patterson. Amen. We're looking forward to hearing from Pastor Roy. It's always a good time when he comes. I want to read this scripture really quickly. It says, from Psalms 139. Oh, Lord, you have examined my heart, and you know everything about me. You know when I sit down or when I stand up. You know my thoughts even when I'm far away. You see me when I travel and when I rest at home. You know everything I do. You know what I'm going to say even before I say it, Lord. You go before me and follow me. You place your hand of blessings on my head. So this song is titled, You Know My Name. So please just keep this scripture in mind. When you have a chance, go back and read it. The whole thing is all wonderful. And it just tells us how much God loves us and how much he's thinking of us. Little old us, you know, sometimes we get wrapped up in ourselves. But we have a bigger person that's looking after us, bigger than any problem, any circumstance that we could face. You.
Everything about me, the ins and outs, the ups and downs. You call me by name when I'm going through. You pick me up. You know. situation and you didn't know what you were going to do but you know that you have a father that's there for you looking out for you knows you by name he cares about all your thoughts everything that you're going through I don't know about you but that means so much to me with all the children that he has but he has a special place in his heart for me that he knows me by name hallelujah let's sing that one more time you know my name you know my name.
y'all help me say that. You know my name. What a marvel that is. You know my name. You know my name. Come on, give God a praise wherever you are right now. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. God is good to us, isn't he? He's so worthy to be praised. Well, I thank God for Black History Month. Thank God for Pastor Obleton and Sister Obleton and this Waukegan Community Church. Just love you all. Uh, I am a fan of this church and Pastor Obleton in particular. If you have your Bibles, I want you to find Philippians, the, the second chapter, beginning at verse 1, Philippians chapter 2, beginning at verse 1. Just grateful to God for this opportunity to be here. And it's another day's journey, and I'm glad about it. Yeah, I'm glad about it. God has been good to me. I know he's been good to you as well. Philippians chapter 2, beginning at verse 1. It says, if there be therefore any consolation in Christ, any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels and mercies, fulfill ye my joy, that you be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Let nothing be done through strife or vainglory, but in lowliness of mind. Let each esteem other better than themselves. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore, God also have highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. And every tongue confess, every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his holy word. I want to talk to you for a few minutes from this theme. My mind is made up. My mind is made up. Come on, say it out loud with me. My mind is made up. Bow with me in just a word of prayer. Dear God, thank you for who you are. You're so great. You're so mighty. You're so powerful. We do honor you. We do bless you. And we thank you for your goodness, your mercy, and your grace. You've been better to us than we've been to ourselves. Down through the years, you've been good to us. We just want to say thank you. Thank you for being our friend, our provider, our way maker. Have your way in the midst of us. Bless this pastor, his lovely wife. Thank you for their ministry. Thank you for their joint ministry. Thank you for the leadership at this church. Thank you for this praise team. What a blessing they were to us this morning. Pray that your hand will be upon each of us. Bless these musicians. Let the power of the Lord, the glory of the Lord rise among us. And we thank you for victory. We thank you for dominion. Thank you for power. Give me clarity of thought, precision of speech. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray, amen. Amen. Well, again, I'm so glad to be here with you, and um, I want to just dive into the word. Maybe I'll sing a little bit at the end, uh, but let me dive in the word. I've been doing some reflection lately. Uh, I've been doing some, some thinking. Uh, as, I, as I thought back, uh, way back to like 1980, I was sitting in a kitchen with my spiritual mentor, Missionary Shirley Spells. And her dad was there. We were actually at his place. And she said, why don't you give us a Bible story? <laughs> I 
I was like, a Bible story? She said, you know, a Bible lesson. You go to Moody, right? I said, yes, I go to Moody. And she said, okay, well, give us a Bible. And so I said, okay, this is my spiritual mentor. I don't remember what I taught, but I do remember afterwards her father, who was a national evangelist, maybe international evangelist in Church of God in Christ, he just looked at me in a real quizzical kind of way. And he said, you know what? You're unusual. You're unique. And whatever you do, don't let anybody take that away from you. you your, your ministry is unique. Always be who you are. Don't compromise. You hear me? Yes, sir. I do. Fast forward. I've gone to Moody, completed, and I'm at the store. And um, I never will forget it. A guy who was a dean at Moody came through the store, and I said, Dean so-and-so, how are you? I'm Roy Patterson. I, I went to Moody, and I'm working here part-time at Sears. And um, he got his order from me, and he shook his head and said, I can't believe you did three years at Moody, which is all we did at that time. Can't believe you went to school at Moody, and this is where you ended up at, at Sears, and walked away from me. I, I, I remember how that felt how disappointed I was, and yet at the same time, I was like, whatever. Maybe a few months beyond that, I told the Lord, I'm sick of working at Sears. I'm sick of selling these water heaters. I'm sick of selling these sump pumps, these water softeners. I, I'm, I'm just sick of this. <laughs> and the Lord spoke to me and said, well, what do you want to do? I said, I want to do radio. That's what I went to school for. I want to I do radio. He said, well, you should apply. And so I applied to the biggest station uh, in Chicagoland at that time, WYCA, 92.3 FM, and uh, Taff Harris and all of them, and uh, a guy named Chris Stevens during the, the daytime. Anyway, I, I go down there. I apply. I see two of my best buddies, Pierre Chestang and David Spearman. They're there at the interview thing, as well as another guy named Tom Svoboda. And uh, I, I, I read what they wanted me to read. I said what they wanted me to say. And I said, the Lord has sent me here. I'm looking forward to what God has for me in my future. No more water heaters, no more water softeners. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The phone rang. Yes. Hello, this is Roy Patterson. Hey, this is WYCA. Oh, wonderful. And I'm ready to say, so when do I start? And the guy went on and said, man, we enjoyed interviewing you. Well, thank you so much. It was a blessing. We decided to hire somebody else. What? What, what happened? What done did happen? Huh? And so I hung up, and uh, I wasn't on speaking terms with God. I said, you done faked me out. I had my hopes all up high, and I'm, I'm ready to submit a resignation to these people at Sears, and, and you didn't come through for me. I, I'm going to just keep it 100. You didn't come through. And so, uh, you know, I was giving God the silent treatment. Y'all don't know nothing about that, but that's what I did. And so uh, about a week later, uh, phone rang. Hey, this is WYCA. And how can I help you? <laughs> Lord, have mercy, Jesus. The guy that we hired, he quit. So we wondered, are you still interested? I sheepishly looked up toward heaven and said, God, I'm sorry. In other words, what God has for me is for me. And he may not come when we want him, but he will be right on time. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? So, so I've, been, I've, I've been thinking, I've been reflecting. Um, because in times like these, we need to reflect. This COVID virus has decimated so many communities, and we're really not out of the woods quite yet. As you recall, 2020 was a year of distance. Uh, we had to socially distance where we continue to wear these masks, stand six feet apart. We, we, we want to be careful. We really, really do. Um, it, it's, it's been prevalent. It's hit my family. It's hit so many other families as well. And by God's grace, it was not fatal for us. But for some, it has been. Uh, we've been distanced when it comes to, to mental stability. There are people, because they've been isolated, uh, the issues of depression and suicidal ideation has really cropped up. There's been more domestic violence, and uh, husbands and wives have spent more time together than they typically would, and, and it's, uh, it's affected some marriages. It really, really has. Uh, during this particular season, racial 
uh, disharmony has been prevalent. Uh, it's been clear through the death of Ahmad Arbery and Breonna Taylor, uh, George Floyd. We, we, we could see very clearly uh, as a nation how bad things have been. Uh, even those loved ones who have been at the brink of death uh, who have died and have had to die without their family around them. Only the nurses, only the doctors. It's been a time of distancing. Has this time of distance affected you? I think it's affected most of us. But the guy who wrote this book, uh, Philippians, the, the passage that we're looking at, he knew about being distanced. He was incarcerated. He was in a Roman jail. And um, though he was surrounded by guards that he literally won to Christ, he still uh, missed Aquila and Priscilla. He still missed Timothy, Nim. He, he longed for these churches that, that he had planted and, and, and wanted to impart to them. Hence, letters were written to these particular places. Uh, this scholar, this theologian, this church planner, this missionary was intent on a couple of key issues that he said, I got to address this when it comes to Philippi. Y'all remember Philippi, don't you? Oh my goodness, Philippi is probably one of the most famous places on Paul's journey. Philippi was a place where he went and the girl was demon-possessed and at first Paul was trying to ignore her and she kept talking crazy and Lord have mercy, eventually he couldn't stand it no more, cast the devil out of her. And then uh, the people that owned her, she was a slave girl, they realized that she couldn't tell fortunes anymore. So they grabbed Paul, brought him into town and people beat Paul and Silas and threw him in jail. Y'all remember the story, don't you? And, and then at midnight, Paul and Silas, they sang and they prayed. And uh, there was an earthquake, and Lord have mercy, they were set free. Uh, the jailer came in. He wanted to kill himself. He, Paul said, do yourself no harm. And uh, it's at that point that the church at Philippi is established. It's, it's, it's fascinating history right there. So this scholar, theologian, church planner, missionary, he's intent on saying, hey, I got I to tell y'all something. It's not enough for God to shake things up. It's not enough for you just to be saved. I, I, I need you to get the right mindset. Somebody say mindset. Uh, the word mind is mentioned four times in this passage. The word mind is mentioned 92 times throughout the scripture. Y'all know how it's mentioned. Love the Lord your God with all your heart mind, soul, and strength. Y'all know how it's mentioned. The carnal mind is enmity toward God. Y'all know about it. Nehemiah said the people had a mind to work. Uh, they knew that the demon-possessed man was delivered because he was clothed and in his right what? His right mind. Uh, Jeremiah put it like this. This I recall to mind, therefore have our hope. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. They're new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. When it comes to definition of the word mind, it's not just thinking. It certainly is thoughts, but it's also attitudes, paying attention. Just like we say, mind your matters, uh, manners, uh, we say to some people, you must have lost your mind. Uh, I'm going to give them a piece of my mind. Now, don't give them too much because you only got so much. Amen. Uh, it's, in times like this, it's easy to be distracted. Uh, you can get caught up in right-wing thinking or left-wing thinking, stinking thinking, having a heavenly mind, a business mind. Ultimately, the devil is not after my body. He's not after my money. He's not after my time. He's after my mind. If he gets my mind, he gets all the other stuff too. Come on, somebody. And so during this time, during this Black History Month, throughout this year of 2021, I've got to have a made-up mind. Uh, a mind to walk, first of all, number one, I've got to walk in my calling. John Maxwell said, unsuccessful people focus on, on, on survival. Average people focus on maintenance, and successful people focus on progress. How many of y'all want to move forward? Anybody? I got, I, I got to move forward. I can't stay where I'm at. God has more for me. Come on, somebody say more. Uh, during 2021, we've got to have a mind that is right. We got to just take out time to do more when it comes to uh, thinking. I got to think more. I got to watch less TV. Come on, somebody. Uh, 
I got to spend less time on Facebook or on Twitter. I, I just got to do it. I got to read more books. I got to hang out with people that are smarter than me, that know more about certain topics than, than I know about. I got to respect myself. Na, 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 na. Respect yourself. Y'all know nothing about that. Uh, you got to respect your time. Decide which direction you're going in. Pray. Ask God to lead you and to guide you. What does he want you to do? Meditate on his word both day and night. Ask yourself, what's the goal? Not just for today, not just for tomorrow, but what do I want to be doing two years from now? five years from now, 10 years from now. I got to do some thinking. I, I got to write some stuff down. I got to talk about it. I got to confess it. I got to work toward it. We need to have a made up mind when it comes to what is God's calling on my life. I'm not going to be able to do all that Joseph did, and, and David uh, couldn't do all that Moses did, and Moses wasn't called to do all that Isaiah did. We are unique, as, as my sister read in, in Psalm 139. That passage talks about us being skillfully and wonderfully made. Nobody's eyes are exactly the same. Nobody's fingerprints are exactly the same. And I believe nobody's calling is exactly the same. You got to do what God has called you to do. And you won't, be ha you won't be happy trying to do what everybody else is doing. Come on, say amen, somebody. Uh, Paul made it clear that he was pressing toward the mark of the high calling of God that's in Christ Jesus. After all the churches that he planted, all the sermons that he preached, all the times he was beaten, all the times that he was stoned, there was still something on the inside that had holy ambition. I know that God wants me to do more. I, want, I know he wants me to be more. I haven't reached my goal yet, but as a hymn writer said, I'm pressing on the upward way. New heights I'm gaining every day. Still praying as I'm onward bound. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Paul said, there's more that I want to do. There ought to be something in you that says, I believe God's got more for me. Uh, I'm here to make a difference. That's what I'm here to do. I'm here to let this little light of mine shine in the darkness. Uh, I'm here to cast down every stronghold. I'm here to heal the afflicted, to lift up bowed down head. I'm here to bring the glory of the Lord in a very dark and dangerous world. God, I want to be what you want me to be. Come on, let's give God a praise in here. I got to protect my mental computer. Now, I'm almost everybody in here got a computer. Hey, man. I got to protect this mental computer. Uh, too much stuff is slowing down my processing machine. Huh? Uh, I need to delete some things. <laughs> I need to delete bitterness. I need to delete rage. I need to delete what the naysayers are saying about me. Uh, recently, uh, Shaq said something about one basketball player, said it directly to his face and said, uh, you might be good, but you're really not good enough to continue uh, doing what you're doing on this team to take them to the next level. The young man said, all right. Shaq said, that's all you got to say? He said, that's all I got to say. He said, throughout my life, people have told me what I could not do. And so what they needed to do was just watch me do what they said I could not do. So, yeah, Shaq, that's all I got to say to you is, I, in essence, watch me work. Come on, somebody. You, you, you need to delete what the naysayers are saying and go on and ponder what God is saying. Let me give you the verse that you need to meditate on. Uh, Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Now, here's the reality. I'm not getting any younger. Amen. You not either. I, 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 you know, you're in your 20s, you're in your 30s, you're in your 40s, and you feel like the whole world is in front of you, and maybe it is. But I'm sure I got less days ahead of me than I do behind me. And since I'm not getting any younger, I got to realize I can't fulfill everybody else's thoughts and will for my life. Come on, somebody. At, at a certain point, I got to make up in my mind, well, uh, if I say yes to this, this is what Crawford Loritz said, this powerful statement, hold on to this one. If I say yes to this, that means I got to say no to that. I, I can't do everything. I can't make everybody happy. I can't put a smile on everybody's face. And here's my problem. While I'm trying to please everybody else, I'm frustrating myself, and people are wondering why I'm snapping and cussing everybody out. Come on, somebody. 
At a certain point, all I got to do is just say, no, that's, that's not God's will for my life. I appreciate it. I'm going to pray for you. If I can support you, I will. But right now, this is what the Lord would have me to do. I wish I had some help in here. Uh, yeah, I got to know what God's will is for my life. Pastor said this to me earlier. If, if I don't know God's will for my life, people will come up with a plan for my life. Come on, somebody. Uh, I can't sing harmony if I don't know my part. Where are my singers at? <laughs> Uh, hey, I, I need to know my own part. I, I really can't sing soprano. I, I got some head notes that I can hit, but the reality is I can't do that full voice. But there's nothing like that soprano, nothing like that alto. It's nothing like it. And I can hold down the tenor for a little while. I got to do what God has given me to do. Come on, somebody shout like Sammy Davis Jr. I got to be me. Amen. Somebody said, who is Sammy Davis Jr.? I'm going to keep moving. Amen. Here's the next thing. Now should I walk in my call? I need to walk in my connection. I need to walk in connection. Somebody say connection. I need you to say it louder than that, even at home. Connection. Paul asked the Philippians to get along. <laughs> Can't y'all just get along? Can't y'all just stop all this fighting and fussing? I, Look, I was, I was beaten. I was, I was stoned. I, I've been through all kinds of changes. People have talked about me. Sure is your bone. As uh, long as I got King Jesus, I know I don't need, I, I've been saying I don't need nobody else. The reality is I do need somebody else. I need y'all to get along. Can't y'all just do that? Uh, listen, just because people are in the church doesn't mean that the church is in them. Come on, somebody. People tend to disagree. People are human. they just as human as you are. Don't be so shocked when they don't act the way you want them to completely act because the reality is you don't always act the way you want to act. Huh? <laughs> Henry Ford said, coming together is a beginning, staying together is progress, and working together is success. If only we could come together, if only we could work together. The apostle gives a strange prescription for unity. Can I share it with you? Can I share it with you? He starts in verse 2. He says, be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. He's saying, in essence, I want y'all to share the same direction. I want you to have the same soul, as it were, when it comes to what God's will is for your life. Uh, we, we don't need to have factions. We, we don't need to uh, be divided. Uh, we, we don't need uh, KKK in the body of Christ. We don't need Proud Boys in the body of Christ. Uh, we, we don't need different factions in the body of Christ that says that black people are better than white people or white people are better than black people or Latino people are better than, than, than any other group or Asian people. Are, I bet that, that, that might work in the world, but that don't work in the church. I wish I had some help in here right now. Uh, uh, we, we don't need uh, the Democratic Party to, de to, 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 to dominate the church or... <laughs> The Republican Party to dominate the church. I, I'm laughing because one of my friends unfortunately said to one of my other friends uh, that the black church has too much politics in it. I, I had to laugh at that. I, and so I told the person, before you meet my white brother with this black brother, you ought not to say that because Donald Trump had white evangelicals wrapped around his little finger. Come on, somebody. No, no we, we, we can't have Democrats or, or Republicans dom dominate. Uh, we got a president above the president. I wish I had a help in here right now. We got a king of kings that's, that, that, that's, that's leading us and guiding us. Uh, we can't afford to be divided. We can't afford to have the enemy come in and make inroads that will hinder us. We have to be of one mind. Somebody say one mind. Uh, the, the old song said, woke up this morning with my mind, stayed on Jesus, woke up this morning with my mind, oh Lord, stayed on the Lord. Now, now, not only did I wake up that way, I'm hoping you woke up that way too. And even if you didn't wake up with your mind stayed on him, get your mind on him. Come on, somebody. 
Amen. We, we need to have the mind of Christ. We do that through the word of God. We do that through prayer. We do that through fellowship. One mind. Let's get on one accord. Okay, let me keep moving. Let me keep moving. Uh, verse 3, let nothing be done through strife or vainglory, but in lowliness of mind. Let each esteem other better than themselves. Whew. It's a dog-eat-dog -dog world, isn't it? I'm better than you. You ain't better than me. Uh, I'm going to do what I want to do when I want to do it. Uh, no, no, you don't go ahead, uh, me, and, and, you, and you don't give me instruction. You're not the boss of me. I'm not Lil Nas X, but can't nobody tell me nothing. <laughs> it's something wrong with that. We ought to prefer each other. Uh, uh, I, I, I know I could sing it, but I want to hear you sing it. I know I could uh, get, get whatever the, the best or the last piece of pie, but I know you love sweet potato pie or pumpkin pie, whatever it might be. You can go on and have it. I, I know I could sit here, but I prefer you. I want you to be blessed. I, let, let, let me pause right here. Somebody said this a little bit earlier. It, it says, if God treats us all like we his only child. I love when my sister said that. Uh, he, he treats us that way. And the reality is what God has for me is for me. I don't have to knock you down to get what God has for me. I said, I don't have to knock you down to get what God's got for me. Uh, amen. I, uh, there's so much going through my mind right now. Reality is, well, let me just go on and say it. Abra Abraham had uh, heard from the Lord, wherever you look, uh, it's going to be blessed. Wherever you look, that's yours. And he said, okay, well, Lot, you can have uh, this area over here or, or that area over there. And he said, well, I want this area over here, which turned out to be Sodom and Gomorrah because it was well watered, it was beautiful, it was manicured, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. The Lord reminded him, said, no, Abraham, I, I know what you said, but here's the reality. Everywhere you look, everywhere you walk, everywhere you move, I, I got you covered. You don't, don't even worry about, don't even be concerned about uh, what other folks have and, and even some of the silly moves you might make to give stuff away. If I said, I'm going to bless you, I'm going to bless you. If I said, I'm going to keep you, I'm going to keep you. If I said, I'm going to deliver you, I'm going to deliver you. If I said, I'm going to make a way for you, I'm going to make a way for you. Has anybody in here seen God make a way when you didn't know he was going to make a way? Is there anybody in here that knows that you didn't deserve for him to make a way? Uh, you had really forfeited him making a way. But amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found, was blind, but now I see. I couldn't see how good God was until he kept on blessing me. Come on, he kept on making a way. He kept on bringing me out. He kept on giving me joy in the midst of sorrow all around. God has a way of making us feel like we're his only child. I don't have to knock you down because the blessings keep overtaking me. Every time I turn around, there's a blessing behind me. I, I look to the left. I look to the right. I don't have to worry about it. God's got me. And as long as God's got me, I can make it. I, I wish somebody in here would say, yeah. Let me keep going real quick. Paul said, my prescription is, be of the same mind. My prescription is, prefer one another. He said, as a matter of fact, let me give you the third part of the prescription. Can I give you all the third part of the prescription? He said, when it comes to having a made up mind, not only have a made up mind when it comes to calling, not only have a made up mind when it comes to being connected to other people, but here's an example for you. Let this mind that was in Christ Jesus, come on, let that mind be in you. Come on, somebody. We got to do this thing the way Jesus would want to I want us to do it. Who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation. He came from heaven to earth. Oh, yes, he did. Born in a manger. Wait a minute. He the king of glory. How he going to be born in a barn? Living in Nazareth. The people said, can any good thing come out of Nazareth? This Jesus healed the sick, gave sight to the blind, surrounded by the poor, the weak, sinners. He was the son of God. One day they shouted, Hosanna. The next week they shouted, crucify him. They hung him high. 
they stretch him wide for my sins. Sure enough, he died. He died till the earth began to reel and rock like a drunken man. The moon, as it were, dripped down blood. They took his clothes and gambled for it. He died. Didn't he die? I'm talking about having a humble mindset. He could have called 10,000 angels. Yes, yes, yes. But he decided to die for your sins and mine. I'm talking about having a humble mindset. Somebody shout, yeah. But then early, one Sunday morning, he got up. It's a recipe for blessing. When you go low, God will raise you high. Come on, somebody shout, yeah. He got up with all power in his hand that at the name of Jesus, every knee, every knee, Bishop Huey Rogers said, every black knee, every white knee, every Puerto Rican knee, every Democratic knee, every Republican knee is going to bow down and say, Jesus, he's Lord to the glory of God the Father. God, help me to get along with people. If Jesus could come all the way from heaven down, surely I could let somebody get in front of me in the line. Surely I can give an offer to those that haven't treated me right. Surely I can prefer my brother or my sister. Be humble. Come on, give God a praise in here. I've got a mind to walk in my calling. But I've also got a mind to connect with those that love Jesus, who want to preach the gospel, teach the Bible, and worship him in spirit and in truth. No man is an island. We can't make it all by ourselves. But what we need in times like these is to have our own vision from heaven for who God would have us to be in the army of the Lord. In the army of the Lord. I want to encourage you today. Take out some time to think. Take out some time to think. Take out some time to think what God has for you. No more of this being bumped around. No more of this whack-a-mole mentality. God, you're our refuge and our strength. In this world of social distancing, you're a very present help in the time of trouble. I want to remember that you've commanded me to be still and to know that you're God. You're God. I'm not. You're God. They're not. I trust you. You are the source of my strength. You're the strength of my life. I lift my hands in total praise to you. Lord, I pray for my brother and my sister. I pray in the name of Jesus that you will lead them and guide them, give them that sense of calling, that sense of connection. I pray in the name of Jesus for everyone that's lonely, that feels isolated, that feels like no one cares, nobody sees, nobody knows. Give them to know that you see, that you know, that you are there. I pray that you let somebody call them to remind them that not only are they noticed in heaven, but they are noticed down here on earth as well. And they're still part of the army of the Lord. Thank you, Lord, for who you are, what you've done, and what you're going to do. We commit ourselves to you now. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. You are my 
pray that today that we would just walk in his strength. That's our strength. Nothing else, no one else. That's our freedom, to walk in his strength. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We have been in the presence of God Almighty this morning. And I don't know about you, but now, I didn't before I came, but now I got a made-up mind to be all that God has called me to be because he's a God of no limits. And I am convinced that God is just starting to do a great and a mighty work 
in your life and in the life of Waukegan Community Church. Amen. We really appreciate our speaker, the man of God, uh, Pastor Roy Patterson Common, that's blessing us with a powerful, powerful, powerful word. And we just want to bless him right now. We're going to get ready to do an offering. We're going to do it in a unique way here. Uh, everything is online now. Uh, but, but, but things here is not online, but it's online and whole lot, it's online and not online. And, you know, we're, we're just, we're at a different level. But anyway, what am I saying? This is what I'm saying. We can text. You know, if you're watching, you say, hey, I just want to bless the man of God. Let, let's talk about giving. Uh, we give our tithes for the church, support the ministry, but then we give a special offering. This is a special offering. Give your tithe, but this is a special offering. We just want to bless the man of God. There's several ways you can do it. You know, you can do it here. You can come by the church, or you can do it online. So we sophisticated. We got text. Text this, 847, yeah, 847-584. I know it's on the stream, 1500. I'm taking my time for old school. See, see, new school go too fast. 847, <laughs> eight, I'm sorry, 847-584-1500. And just text Patterson and, and bless the man of God. We want to bless the man of God. We want to bless the man of God. And we just appreciate you at uh, supporting our ministry and uh, supporting us and supporting speakers when they come out. And so we thank you and we just praise you and we just want to bless you. If you got an offering, uh, if you're here in the sanctuary, um, you can give your offering as well. I got one. I just want to bless uh, what, what the man of God and spoke a powerful word. And, you know, and, and I just want the word of God to go forward. So I want to do everything I can to bless the word of God. That's the only thing that won't return void. Today we got an annual meeting at 1 p.m. So I want to invite everybody, all of our members, annual meeting at 1 p.m., 1 p.m. We're going to talk about our vision. Uh, we're going to talk about how not just come together and stay together, but learn how to work together for the kingdom of God. So everybody need to be a part of that. Uh, if you have any questions getting uh, that Zoom information, you can call the church. We'll give you that Zoom information. Uh, we got an annual meeting to talk about what we're going to do for 2021. Uh, reflect on God's blessing in 2020, but move forward in 2021. A couple of more announcements. just want to uh, uh, let you be aware of the women's Bible studies has already started on Tuesday, uh, already started. Help uh, the Lord, the road keep changing. The road of life keep changing. You're in one season and you go to another, another, another. The road keep changing. Got some wonderful ladies that's going to speak. I think uh, uh, Lisa Haywood uh, from D.C. is going to speak uh, 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 on Tuesday. Just great, great, great ladies doing a good job. And then the men, we're starting on Wednesday, on Wednesday, being hopeful, alert. It's a Bible study going through First and Second Peter. It's going to teach men how to be alert. And we need to be alert for the kingdom of God. We just really thank you so much for just being a part of Waukegan Community Church. And uh, we, we, we value you. We're going to start, matter of fact, we're going to start an online membership. Some people uh, who are not in the area want to become a part of our church. So we're going to start an online membership class. You want to be a part of us in March. We're going to start a membership class, how you can join us and be a part of what we're trying to do. We're not just doing a work in Waukegan. Okay, this is where we started. But we want to do a work in all of Illinois, not just Illinois, but all the United States, the world, the nation. We're going all the way because that's what God called us to, to, to do and to be, to go all the way. So we just appreciate you just being a part Thank you for watching us. Thank you for telling other people about us because we want to move forward for the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. Worship team, you did a great job. Bless us. I almost felt like singing in that last song. I might do it sooner than you think. I'm convinced. Yes, I'm sure. I'm convinced. Yes, I know you reach for me. you reach for me. I'm convinced and I know I'm convinced I'm for sure you reach for me. you reach for me. I'm convinced I am sure I am sure I'm convinced 
Yes, I know. Yes, I know. You reach for me. Yes, I know. Yes, I know. I'm convinced. I'm convinced. Yes, I'm sure. Yes, I'm sure. You read for me. You read for me. I'm convinced. I'm convinced. Yes, I know. Yes, I know. I'm convinced. I'm convinced. I am sure. Yes, I know. Yes, I know. I'm convinced. I'm convinced. Yes, I'm sure. situation. He knows the problems that you're going through. He knows the failures that you have made. And despite all of that, he still reaches for you. He still finds time to know exactly everything about you. So I know that I am convinced. I know without a shadow of a doubt that God reach into your life and change your life. He reached for me. He reached for me. I'm convinced. And I know. I'm convinced. Yes, I'm sure. He reached for me. He reached for me. He reached for me. He reached for me. Hello and good morning, Waukegan Community Church. Hey guys, I just want to come to you this morning on behalf of the finance team to say thank you. At the end of 2020, we ended the year with a request and, uh, and asking you to sort of reach out and, and give so that we can end 2020 on a good note. And you guys really, really responded. So for that, we want to say thank you. Listen, I don't have to tell anybody what a tough year 2020 was. It was a tough year for individuals. It was a tough year for businesses. And it was also a tough year for churches. The reality is there are a number of churches that started the year 2020 that didn't finish the year 2020. But because of your generous giving and your faithfulness, Joaquin Community Church was not only able to still be here, but we were able to continue to do the work that God has called us to do. So as we go into 2021, we do so with a feeling of um, uh, thanksgiving, uh, energetic, uh, with a fresh start, uh, 
and, and look forward to doing even greater things than we did in 2020 uh, with the continued support of, of our ministry. Listen, WCC is an incredible church. It's an incredible ministry and something I'm very proud to be a part of. And so just wanted to say thank you and let's get going with our fresh start in 2021. God bless. It's your girl, Michelle, and I am here to wish you an undeniably new year that is going to be so blessed. I know that it is because this is our year to be strong and to be courageous. The Bible says in Deuteronomy that the Lord is calling us to be strong and courageous and do not be afraid and do not be discouraged because he says, I will go before you, I will go with you, I will be with you in behind, I will not forsake you, I will um, not fail you. And he gives us such great promises that it makes me realize how important it is that we can go forward in the Lord. There's also a verse that says, when the earth is shaking and unstable, and when the people are afraid, God says, I am the one who keeps a firm foundation. That's so good. And that's so important for us because as we go forward, we need to realize it's not about us. It's really about God holding our earth together and creating a, found, a, a, a firm foundation. So I wanna just talk to the women today and let you know that we are on the prayer line Every Tuesday and Thursday, we are coming together and we are praying. We are asking God to give us the things that our desires in our heart. We are praying for our children. We're praying for our marriages, relationships, for health, for deliverance. You name it, we're praying for it. And we want to invite you to join us every Tuesday and Thursday. Now listen, I know some people say they can't get on Zoom because Zoom is so complicated. Well get on the prayer line, all you have to do is dial a number and put in a code. And I know that you could do that. And so I'm asking all the women to join us on Tuesdays and Thursdays for prayer. Our prayer time starts at 7 p.m. and we only pray for an hour. I also want to tell all the sisters today that Wings Ministry is getting ready to rock it again starting February the 16th, right after Valentine's Day. That's kind of how we always do it. And so we're going to be starting our, um, our, we call it spring Bible study, even though it's in February. Um, it's our spring Bible study, and we, our theme is called, Lord, the road keeps changing. And of course, that's how we navigate our life. It's always something, just when we think we're on this way, the Lord changes it, circumstances come in, but that's okay because we're going to address those issues in our Bible study this um, coming February 16th through. We're going to be about six or seven weeks strong, and I'm just looking forward to it. We have worked so hard, and I know it's going to be a blessing. I'm inviting all the women. Sign up right now on your calendar. Tell a friend about it. Uh, we are really, really looking forward to it. So, we're going to be strong, we're going to be courageous, and we're going to believe God that he is in control. And no matter what comes our way, we know with Jesus on our side, we're going to make it. So I want to just give that shout out to you as women and look forward to either talking to you on the prayer line or seeing you on February in our Wing Zoom Bible study. God bless you. Thank you. Hello, Joaquin Community Church family. The men of integrity are at it again. We'll be starting our next Bible study session very soon. If you missed out on our last session, you missed out on some powerful lessons. We'll be starting our next session on Wednesday, February 24th at 7 p.m. We encourage you to take time out of your busy schedule to join us via Zoom so we can prepare ourselves to do battle. How many of us have been tested in 2020? I know I have. We've had financial, marital, employment troubles, and we've lost loved ones. The list goes on and on. Come out and prepare yourselves with the Word of God so that you can equip your family for battle. The Word in Ephesians calls your Bible a sword, and men need to be trained on how to handle your weapon. Psalm 119 verse 130 says, The unfolding of thy word gives light. 
It gives understanding to the simple. I opened my mouth wide and panted, for I longed for thy commandments. The men of integrity lock arms spiritually and physically in prayer, and we do this by studying the Word of God together. Let's put 2020 behind us and move forward together in Christ. We can still have some real fellowship during this pandemic, and we can glorify God at the same time. So please clear your schedules for Wednesday, February 24th at 7 p.m. for the Men of Integrity Virtual Bible Study. I look forward to seeing you there. Thank you and God bless.